what scientists just discovered at the Grand Canyon terrifies the whole world. The Grand Canyon, also known as the Basement of History, is one of the most important landmarks in the United States and the rest of the world. It's a natural wonder that has always fascinated scientists and visitors alike because each layer of rock dates back to a specific time when the Earth was formed. Recently, a group of experts conducted some research on the Grand Canyon and found a shocking discovery that shouldn't exist. How would this discovery affect the history of the Grand Canyon? And should we be worried about this new discovery? Join us as we explore what scientists just discovered at the Grand Canyon that terrifies the whole world. Rock layers dating back over a billion years are missing from the Grand Canyon's geological record, which is known as the Great Unconformity. Since the Grand Canyon serves as evidence of history through rocks, with each layer representing a particular time period that passed on Earth, how would it seem to discover that rock layers dating back over a billion years are missing from the Grand Canyon's geological record? Geologist John Wesley Powell first noticed the anomaly in 1869 while traveling along the Colorado River. Years later, geologists were able to date these layers, which allowed them to confirm the significant unconformity. What happened to the rocks that are missing within this strange gap was discovered by experts when they noticed that some rocks dating back 1.4 to 1.8 billion years ago were next to rocks that are 520 million years old. Scientists even came up with an explanation for the phenomenon in a study. It suggested that the Grand Canyon might have transformed in several ways over the millennia. The results of this research indicate that certain events may have contributed to the strange gap in the geological period. This event was thought to have occurred concurrently with the violent breakup of the supercontinent Rodinia, which occurred between 633 and 750 million years ago. This period must have been a turbulent one for Earth's tectonics. Geologist Alan Krill was hiking with his students along the Bright Angel Trail in the Grand Canyon National Park when Krill noticed a strange rock with marks on it. It was a fallen boulder that was lying by the trail and appeared to have markings that resembled footprints. When a curious Norwegian, Krill, photographed these markings and sent them to his old friend and colleague Stephen Rowland, a paleontologist at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, for analysis, it was discovered that Krill had discovered ancient fossilized footprints. According to Rowland's estimation, the fossil may have lived 313 million years ago, making the fossil track the oldest vertebrae footprints ever discovered in the Grand Canyon. An ancient fossilized footprint formed when they became wet and was covered in sand after that. The sand was a major factor in helping to preserve the fossil markings for millions of years. The Manacatcher Formation is a large sandstone that is about 314 million years old. With all of the analysis from the study, scientists were able to pinpoint the time when the footprints were as much as 330 million years ago and estimated to be about half a million years old. Moving further into the footprint analysis, scientists saw two sets of tracks visible on the boulder face. Although scientists are still determining if the tracks came from two separate reptilian animals or the same animal on different occasions. Roland discovered that the fossil tracks depict two different reptilian animals crossing diagonally over the spot. He also noted that one of the animals was about a foot long and used a lateral sequence walk. A lateral sequence walk is when an animal moves to the left rear foot, followed by the left front, followed by the right rear front, and then the right front. This is due to the fact that the second set of tracks examined were observed to have moved a little bit faster than the first. Regardless of the circumstances, this discovery is significant because the Bright Angel trail tracks 
show the lateral sequence gates were used very early in the history of vertebrates, which was information that scientists were unaware of prior to the discovery. The manager of the Grand Canyon's paleontology program is one scientist who thinks Roland's study's findings regarding the footprints may be debatable. Mark Neville claims that there's considerable disagreement among scientists regarding how to interpret animal tracks, determine the age of rocks, and in particular, determine what kind of animal left these tracks. Neville applauds the discovery, noting in particular that despite the boulder being in plain view, many people had missed it. The Grand Canyon as we know it holds a lot of caves in it, with the insides filled with various remains of plants and animals that give us an insight into the region's past in the days of the Ice Age. The caves also vary in size as some can be so narrow, your entry point would have to be on all fours, or some wide enough to have a dance stop. The Grand Canyon caves are filled with sloth dung and mummified bats. The well-preserved fossils give researchers access to 40,000 years of history and the ability to understand what life was like during the Ice Age. When scientists first started to look at these signs of history, they focused on a rampart cave at the far western end of the canyon, where they discovered several dung balls scattered amidst the rock formation. There have also been several skulls discovered, including extinct mountain goat skulls and even mummified birds. The Grand Canyon condors were probably eating megafauna as a delicacy, but the megafauna went extinct, which could have killed the birds too. These are crucial pieces of the history of the world, and Steve Emsley, a professor of biology at the University of North Carolina and an expert on birds that existed during the Ice Age, was a part of this expedition. He found some condors in the caves and was able to analyze them. The Colorado River is about to dry up. The Colorado River is one of the distinctive features of the Grand Canyon. It originates in the Rocky Mountains and flows south at a distance of 1,500 miles, channeling water through canyons, deserts, waterfalls, and lush wetlands before emptying into the Gulf of California. As it passes through the Grand Canyon, it's used for kayaking, canoeing, and other watercraft excursions. Glend Canyon Dam is one of these built dams. The Colorado River has been running low for some time now, ever since trout became a concern in the southwest. Although the river still flows well at the Grand Canyon, boaters are still seen cruising across Nevada and Arizona's Lake Mead. But distinct lines in the rock walls are seen in the lake's edge. Environmentalists feel that the damming and diverting of the Colorado River has been nothing but a danger to the river especially in the past decade. If the water levels continue to drop, water will not be able to flow downriver due to the dam's positioning, which would have a negative effect on the water supply for the people in Arizona, California, Nevada, and even Mexico. The dam, which is located along the Colorado River, is more than 50 years old and is the moving machine that created Lake Powell. Although it is used to generate hydropower, the water levels are too low to do so. While it may sound strange, uranium has been found in the Grand Canyon, indicating its presence within the rocklands as a radioactive material, which means that there is radiation in its environment. Tests were conducted, and it was discovered that the radiation occurs at the minimum level, indicating that it is safe to raft in the Grand Canyon. As of now, Several locations in the Grand Canyon have abandoned mines in them, which pose a threat to the safety of those living around or in the Grand Canyon itself. When word of the radioactive material spread in the 1950s, miners started to operate in the area and tons of uranium were all mined out of the Grand Canyon's area. One of these communities is the Havasupai tribe whose reservation is located at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. When the uranium mining craze resumed in the 2000s, people returned to the area to begin mining. This period had a negative impact on the Grand Canyon area because the yellow wall polluted it, leaving it in poor condition. Following this incident, petitions were started to forbid uranium mining in the area. What do you think of this new discovery in the Grand Canyon? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe and turn on the notification before leaving. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.